Good morning, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today's topic is 12 things you should be able to say about yourself. These are 12 things that you should be able to say very comfortably daily about yourself. Let me just turn this down a little bit. Okay, uh, but as usual, before we start, I'm going to shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at Starting Point at 844-414-8444. His website is www.startingpointmn.com. Also, Dr. Luis Gonzalez can do one or two of two things for you. The first thing is he can take you from addiction to recovery 24 hours at a time daily. He will never talk about your past and his uh, main goal is to work on today and tomorrow to help you fight your addiction. The other entity that he does have is... He, if you want to, can help mold you into a addiction recovery coach like myself and like he is. If you have passion, personality, and professionalism, and you have some sort of addiction background, whether it being your own or uh, helping other people, maybe you were sponsored AA, call him at 844-414-8444. I have two websites, two entities. My first entity is to provide you with information. That you will find on www.clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. On clearviews.info, I will show you over 80-something videos. There are articles and, and, and pictures and all sorts of good stuff on there. A lot of information from doctors, psychiatrists, and psychologists. They have the clinical background. They provide the medical information I just put it on my website to help you fight your addiction to provide you with the information uh, that you need on my other website which is www.clearreform.com that is where I can help you go from your addiction to your recovery I will be just like Dr. Gonzalez and walk you through uh, your path of recovery I also will not talk about your past I concentrate on today's 24 hours and we talk about tomorrow but together Dr. Luis Gonzalez and I and the rest of all the addiction coaches globally can help you take your life back like I said we're going to talk about um, the cat must be around again we're going to be talking about 12 things that you should be able to say to about yourself what can you say about yourself can you even say five things well these are 12 things that I found online uh, that people uh, have said uh, is the best thing to say about yourself um, they were probably over a hundred and I narrowed it down to 12 we are going to discuss the 12. We are going to discuss different methods on battling addiction. We're going to discuss how to be a good role model. And we're also going to discuss on how to recover from alcoholism or substance abuse. Uh, you need to do two things, and that is to admit you have a problem. You have to stop denying it. And the other thing is to seek your higher power. So let's jump right into 12 things you should be able to say uh, about yourself. You know you're on the right track when you repeat each of the following headlines to to yourself and honestly I am following my heart and in, uh, intuition what does that mean don't be pushed by your problems be led by your dreams so don't let your problems just push you and push you aside be led by your dreams live the life you want to live be the person you want to remember years from now. Make decisions and act on them. Make mistakes, fall, and try again. Even if you fall a thousand times, at least you won't have to wonder what it could have been. Each of us has a fire in our hearts burning for something. It could be your loved ones. Um, it's our responsibility in life to find it and keep it. It is your life and a short one at that. Don't let others extinguish your flame. Try what you want to try. Go where you want to go. Follow your own intuition. Dream with your eyes open until you know exactly what it looks like. Then do at least one thing every day to make that uh, dream a reality. And is as you strive to achieve your goals, you can count on there being some fairly substantial disappointments along the way. And be prepared for them. Don't, dis don't get discouraged. 
the road to your dreams may not be an easy one and like any road to any dream it can be rocky let me push this down a little like i always have to do it seems like there we go so i am following my heart and intuition is number one number two i am proud of myself are you proud of yourself i know i am proud of myself it's funny because i was just on the phone with a customer who uh has had a problem trying to get her glasses for the longest time and i explained the process of uh, how i uh indirectly became a mediator for my own job just like uh when i was in the marine corps as a lay leader like i am as an addiction recovery coach i am in between the customer that's either happier or upset and the uh, end result which is a pair of glasses I am the only contact here in the United States for that purpose uh, so it, it, it's ironic that God put me again in a position of being uh, almost like a liaison a mediator and uh, so I happened to mention to this customer what I uh, do for a living which she knew already I was an optician but what I else what else I do for a living which is uh, a uh, liaison between a person that's in addiction and a person that seeks recovery. You're your own best friend and your own biggest critic. Regardless of your opinions of others, at the end of the day, the only reflection staring back at you in the mirror is your own. Accept everything about yourself. Everything. You are, and that is the beginning and the end. No apologies, no regrets. You are you, so there is no apologies, no regrets. There is change on horizon if you want it to be. People who are proud of themselves tend to have uh, passions in life, feel content, and set good examples for others. It requires envisioning the person you would like to become and making your best efforts to grow to be that person. Being proud isn't bragging about you, uh, how great you are or how good you are. Being proud means that you are proud of your accomplishments. We're going to talk about being proud and being a role model in a little bit. It's more like quietly knowing that you're worth a lot. And you are worth a lot. To someone out there, you're worth a lot. But you have to be worth a lot to yourself. Because in order to love, you need to love yourself. It's not about thinking you're perfect because nobody is. I'm not and you're not. But knowing that you're worthy of being loved and accepted by not just one but by many. Number three, I am making a difference. I know with my videos daily, I am making a difference in this world. I know that if two people get anything out of any one of my videos, that is an accomplishment. My first one being me. I know that I will always get something out of each and every video because this is my method of battling addiction. This is what I do daily to, to refresh my memory of what was and to remind me what can be. Act as if you uh, do make differences in the world. And, in, in, you know, it's not even just an act because you do. No matter what you do, you can make a difference in the world. It does work for most people. If it is true that we all live to serve, it is uh, something that you need to, to work with because we are all here to serve. I was just saying to the same customer how I feel that these videos, when you see these videos, you see a face and you hear a voice because this customer was complaining that all she got was dead ends. Emails weren't being answered and phone calls. And I said, well, now that you spoke to a person, Go to my videotapes, www.clearviews.info, and you get to see the face behind the person you just spoke to. That by helping others, we will fulfill our own destiny. And it is. It, it's, it builds up your self-esteem. Uh, it certainly makes God appreciate what you're doing. The answer is a simple yes. You will build your self-esteem, and you will help others. When you make a positive impact in someone else's life, you make a positive impact in your own life. Do something that's greater than you, something that helps someone else to be happy or suffer less. You are only one, but you are one person. If only every person as one person helped one other person, this world would be totally different, folks. You cannot do everything, but you can do something. Smile and enjoy the fact that you made a difference, one you'll likely remember forever. Folks, every time I finish these videos and I look at the video with my wife, I am proud of myself. I'm not bragging, but I am proud of myself because I know there is someone out there that I am helping. 
Number four, I am happy and I am grateful. Are you? Happiness is within you. And you know if you have happiness within your heart. Here, happiness is within you. In your way of thinking, how you view yourself and how the world views you. That's how you know how happy you can be or are. The lens you choose to view everything through determines how you feel about yourself and everything that happens around you. Being grateful will always make you happy. If you're finding it hard to be grateful for anything, sit down, close your eyes, and take a long, slow breath and, great, and be grateful for just being able to breathe. Just go. Because that breath you just took, just now, is somebody else's possible last breath that they are taking. So be grateful for that. If there's nothing else to be thankful for, it's the fact that you went and you can hopefully repeat it over and over because someone else in this world right now just took their last breath. Someone else that closed their eyes was the last time they closed their eyes. They can never open them again. So when you close your eyes and took your breath, be grateful for that. Being grateful will always make you happy. If you're finding it hard to be grateful for anything, sit down, close your eyes, and take a long, slow breath and be grateful for the air. Every breath you take in sync with someone else's last breath is possible. That's what I just said, folks. Number five, I am growing in the best version of me. And, and when we talk about the role model, we want you to be the best version of you so that you become... A role model to make the best version of mini you or otherwise known as mini me Judy Garland once said always be the first-rate version of yourself instead of the second-rate version of somebody else don't try to be anyone else be you God created you the way you are God created you you get to write your own chapters in your book of life which we're going to address in a few minutes live by this statement there is no such thing as living in someone else's shoes the only shoes you can occupy are your own. If you aren't being yourself, you aren't truly living. You're merely existing. Remember, trying to be anyone else is a waste of a person's time and a waste of the person that you are because you don't want to waste that person. Embrace the individual inside of you that has his ideas, strengths, and beauty like no one else. Be the person you know yourself to be, the best version of you, on your terms. And with uh, that remark on your terms, it's always to include God in whatever you choose to do. Remember, He created you, and you also remember He will be the one that will eliminate you. So try to do the best you can in between the beginning of your book and the end of your book. When we talk about those chapters, it's so simple. And if you've seen any of my videos, we all have a beginning and we have an end. My beginning was in 1961. Through the first 17, 18 years, my parents helped me write my chapters in my book of life as role models. And then at 17, I started writing my own chapters. From 1961 until 1981, chapters included a normal childhood and included some alcohol. In 1981, I joined the Marine Corps. I was in Beirut, Lebanon uh, in... Uh, uh, no, excuse me. I joined the Marine Corps in 81. I was in the chaplain. I was in, um, I'm sorry, I, I was in the church and a chaplain came up to me and asked me to be a uh, lay leader. Again, just like me being the liaison between this customer, the mad customer and uh, where her glasses were and me being an addiction coach between addiction and recovery for you uh, I was a lay leader which is between the recruit and a chaplain so if you see the whole big picture God has always put me in a position to kind of be a mediator um, if uh, if I could mediate uh, a, uh, a peace between war I would do that but so in 81 I became a lay leader let's fast forward my chapters in my book to 83 stationed in Beirut Lebanon we have a bombing we lose 241 Marines I was injured pretty bad God shielded me from certain death now I'm gonna fast forward we're gonna fast forward all the way to 2009 I was in another accident up in uh, the Arctic Circle uh, God shielded me from certain death again, uh, but in between all those chapters that were written, uh, there always included a lot of alcohol. Now I'm going to fast forward 2009 to 2011. Um, God tapped me on my shoulder and he said, can you help the older people in the handicap? And uh, I created Master Beach Outreach 2011, which is a uh, 
uh, no profit at all um, uh, organization that I created which is to help handicaps and elders and what we did is we provided uh, clothing and uh, food and uh, services to these people however when God tapped me on my shoulder my alcoholism has become to probably its worst uh, 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 higher ground. In other words, I was drinking 10 to 15 shots of vodka a day. But God continuously protected me from certain death, but he also continuously let me write my own chapters in my book. Now we're going to go to 2013. My whole world crashed around me because I finally, thank God, hit rock bottom. God let me write every single chapter because God wanted me to see that I could not live without his guidance and direction. So in 2013, I reached up to God, I climbed out of the pit of rock bottom, and from 2013 to whenever my end of time is, when God doesn't, uh, uh, when God feels that I need to to uh, leave the earth, every chapter will be written by me. I am responsible for every chapter. Every chapter will include my God, will include my my uh, 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 my my thrive to to help other people with addiction. I couldn't think of the word there, but um, my motivation will never stop on helping other people that have addictions, and uh, every chapter will be good. So if you understand how that works, you have your beginning, you have your end, and you have lots of chapters in between. Every year is one chapter. I am up to chapter 52. My first, uh, let's just say my first 50 chapters or so included always a good human, included always a good person, but included out of the 50 chapters, uh, up, up, take away 14 uh, from 0 to 14 years old, 36 chapters always included alcoholism, folks. 36 chapters. But chapter 51 doesn't have it. Chapter 52 doesn't happen. Have it. And then from now until the end of my time. So that is your book of life. And always remember, it's the last chapters that mean the most in people's minds because they remember them most. And remember that when you reach up to God, it is God that will forgive you for any chapters that were written by you that were not uh, good at all. So let's go to number six. I am making my time count. And we all need to make our time count here on earth. There has to be a reason for living other than just going like a, a rat in a maze or in one of those spinning things that a mouse walks in. Time is the most valuable uh, uh, efforts in time of uh, living. Let me read that again. Time is the most efforts of your life to live the perfect time. Make the time for what does matter today. Really being in the moment, finding passion in your life, seeing the world and traveling or just seeing the world that's normal around you. Being with great people, doing amazing things, and eating amazing food, and savoring life's little pre pl uh, pr pleasures. Remember, your time is priceless, but it's free. God gave you that time. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can spend it, but you can't keep it. Once you've lost it, you can never get it back. You really do only have a short time to live, so let your dreams become big and become bigger and bigger as you go on and let your fears and your actions louder than your words uh, become smaller but let your actions scream out loud so that other people might see it make your time count I am honest with myself and you need to because if you can't be honest with yourself you'll never be honest with other people that's number seven be honest about what's right as well as uh, things that need to be changed or things that are wrong in your life. Be honest about what you want to achieve and who you want to become. Be honest with every aspect of your life always because you are the one person that who can forever be counted on to yourself. Search your soul for the truth so that you truly know who you are. Once you do, you'll have a better understanding of where you are now and where you want to go. And you'll be a better equipped to identify where you want to go and how you want to get there. So you have to be honest with yourself because if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't be honest, period. Number eight, I am good to those I care about. And you know what? I do agree with that statement, but you need to be good to everyone, no matter what. You need to be good. You need to be forgiving. In human relationships, distance is not measured in miles, but in affection. Two people can be right next to each other, yet miles apart. So don't ignore someone you care about because lack of concern hurts more than angry words. 
Stay in touch with those who matter to you most. Not because it's convenient, but because it's worth the extra effort. And what does it take for you to really stay in touch with people, especially the elders, folks? I addressed that issue in one of my other videos. When was the last time you told your family and close personal friends that you love them? Just spending a little time with someone shows that you care. Shows that they are important enough for you that you have uh, chosen to be with them. Out of all the things you do on your busy schedule, find a time just to say I love you and spend a little time together. Talk to them, listen to them, and most importantly, understand them. Number nine, I know the unconditional love feels like. I know what unconditional love feels like. Whether your love is towards a child, a lover, or another family member, know the feeling of giving love and not expecting anything in return is, is precious. This is what lies at the heart of unconditional love. Love through unconditional love is a wondrous adventure that uh, excites the very core of our being, lights our path with delight. This love is dynamic, powerful energy that lifts us through the most difficult times. Love is beautiful and unpredictable. It begins with ourselves, for without self-love, we cannot love others. How can we truly love anything or anyone if you don't love yourself? In loving ourselves, we allow the feeling to generate within us, and then we can share what's inside of us with other people. It's beautiful the way it's uh, worded. Number 10, I have forgiven those who once hurt me. And that is super important because when you forgive, you let that anger and that hatred out of your own ha heart and it uh, decreases your stress level. We've all been hurt by another person at some point or another. We've all been treated badly. Trust was broken, hearts were hurt. And while this pain is normal, sometimes the pain lingers far too long. We relive the pain over and over again letting them live rent-free in our head, and then we have a hard time letting go. You need to, uh, to, you need to learn to forgive. Uh, what's that statement, uh, forget, uh, forgive and forget? I always say it is good to forgive, but you'll probably never forget, and that, that is super important that you remember that. Number 11, I'll take full accountability of my own life because you are responsible for your own chapters in your life. We just addressed that issue. Beginning, birth, end is death. It's what's in between. And today, September 25th, 2014, can be the first day of new chapters being written by you in your book of life. But it all starts with you. It starts with you to stop denying that you have a problem and starts with you by asking God for guidance and uh, direction. Own your own your choices and mistakes and be willing to take the necessary steps to improve upon them. Either you take accountability for your life or someone else will. And you don't want somebody else to run your life. And when they do, you'll become a slave to their ideas and dreams instead of a pioneer of your own. You are the only one who can directly control the outcome of your life. And no, it won't always be easy. Every person has a stack of obstacles in front of them. And that goes right back to following your heart and intuition. It's not going to be an easy road, no matter which way you look at it. Life is not an easy road. Life is as good as you make it, no matter how bad, how financially broke, how little your home and how lousy your car is. Your life is as good as you make it. And how is that possible? If you financially can't make it better, you can make it better spiritually and emotionally. One way is to have no regrets. This is one simple combination of previous uh, of the previous 11. Follow your heart, be true to yourself, do what makes you happy, be with uh, who makes you smile, laugh as much as you breathe, love as long as you live, and say what you need to say without hurting someone, of course. Offer a helping hand, and when you're, a, uh, when you're able, try to help as much as possible. Appreciate all the things you have, and then, at the end of the day, thank God for another breath that you're allowed to take. That is, those are the 12 things that you should be able to say to yourself. You should be able to say, I'm following my own heart and my intuition. You should be able to say, I'm proud of myself. 
You should be able to say, I am making a difference. You should be able to say, I am happy and grateful. You should be able to say, I'm growing into the best version of me. You should be able to say, I'm making my time count. You should be able to say, I'm honest with myself and others. You should be able to say, I'm good to those who I care about. You should be able to say, I know what's unconditional love and I know what it feels like. You should be able to say, I have forgiven those who once hurt me. You should be able to say, I take full accountability for your life. And you should always be able to say, I have no regrets, folks. And it all starts today, September 25th, 2014. And it all starts in your home that we spoke about. You, as the parent or grandparent or legal guardian, need to be the role model. What is a role model? A role model is someone that other people look up to. That other people might mimic you to be. That other people look at you as their hero. Who are those people? Those people usually would be your children or your grandchildren. So if you as a role model should never do these four things, especially in front of them. Never smoke, because when you smoke, they will smoke. That is a guarantee because they think if it's okay by you to smoke, it should be okay for them to do it. Number two is drink. When you drink, you're saying it's okay for them to do it if you do it in front of them. Number three is to use profanity. When they hear the lousy words that come out of your mouth that are so filthy, they will think it's part of the English language and they will utilize those words daily themselves. Number four, domestic abuse or physical violence. Never ever should you ever do that anywhere especially in front of your children, but never do it anywhere. If you do find yourself doing that, you need to go and seek counseling and some therapy. You really do, folks. Folks, if you don't seek the counseling therapy, that slap here and that punch that you deliver to your loved one possibly could be a knife one day or a gun. And if you're the victim of the person that I'm speaking of, you need to call the authorities immediately. It is better for the authorities to be called to have your loved one taken out in handcuffs and hopefully your loved one will seek some sort of treatment than the authorities to be called to have you taken out in a body bag. So the role model uh, examples that I just gave you cannot include those fours, drinking, smoking, profanity, and domestic abuse. Cannot include them. But they should include these four. Love, Compassion, respect, and what do you think the number four is? Be a good role model, that's right. Those four have to be in your household. When you let the sunshine from outside come into your heart and your home, you will get nothing but positive results out of that. But if you continue letting the darkness, like the smoking, the drinking, the profanity, and the domestic abuse, stay in your home, you will get nothing but negative results. If you want your children to one day be on Jerry Springer, Maury, or Steve Wilkos, to say on there that it's because of your parents or their parents that they are doing what they're doing, then continue doing those four things that I told you not to do. Continue smoking, drinking, profanity, and domestic abuse, and you are telling your kids it's okay to do that. It's okay. Go ahead. Because if I'm doing it in front of you, it's okay. And they will go and take that out to society. And they will blame their parents or their grandparents for the rest of their life. Because they are going to say, this is what we saw daily. I was brought up this way, as they're going to say. My, my father sexually molested me, someone might say. My parents hit me, someone might say. My parents constantly drank in front of me, someone might say. Don't give them any reason to say any of that. Be the role model that God wants you to be. Starting today, September 25th, 2014. Be that role model. And you will write those chapters in your children's book of life from zero to about 17 to 18 to include love, respect, compassion, and that will also include you being a good role model. Wouldn't that be perfect to have that? in their chapters, in their book of life. 
then your mission is accomplished. And one other thing I want to add to that is you got to make sure that you go into your bathroom and, and you need to arrest your legal drug dealer that's in there called Miss, Mr. Medicine Cabinet. If you leave any addictive drugs in your medicine cabinet that your children can get to, you are legalizing drugs to be dispensed from there. Go in there and arrest your medicine cabinet. Take whatever belongings he has that is addictive and lock them up somewhere else that he can't dispense them anymore. In combination of you being a good role model and the medicine cabinet not having addictive drugs, you are making a well-balanced home. By being a good role model, you are creating a well-balanced person in your children. So when they go out to society that's so terrible, they will have such a guard around them of protection that they will always thank you for the rest of your life. But if you don't either become a role model, a good role model, or if you haven't been one, let today, September 25th, be the first day of you writing your new chapters in your book of life. And if you have issues with substance abuse, let today, September 25th, 2014, be the first day that you're going to say, Ralph, I know I have a problem. Because when you stop denying that, that's when your life really will start. And that's when you have to reach to your higher power. And you have to ask for guidance and direction. These are the methods. You can go to AA. They have, when you first hit rock bottom, they have a thing called the 90-90, which is 90 meetings in 90 days. Go there. Do those 90 meetings in 90 days. Do the 12-step program. Work it as best as you can. Go to the meetings. Meet people. Try to meet a sponsor. You need to get somebody that you can lean on. And if that works, that is great. It's worked for millions of people since 1936. I did try AA. I needed to be more active. I needed to be involved like I'm doing right now. I needed to be your fa my face, my voice into your living room. That way you can get to see what a real person looks like that has probably the same issues as you. My methods include www.clearviews.info, which is all informational things on addiction and recovery. My methods include my videos. I've done over 115 videos already, folks. My methods include stomping the grounds of my alcoholic days in Mastic Beach. Stomping those grounds to speak to people just like me, just like you, and interviewing them so that you get to hear the interview. And what is that interview going to tell you? It's going to paint a realistic picture of what people are going through daily, whether it being drugs or alcohol. That is what those interviews are going to do. So that is my method of working. I work the videos. I work the interviews. I work my websites. I work Twitter, Blogger, Dig, Dogpile, Google, Yahoo. Um, did I, oh, Google. Yeah, I said Google. But there are plenty out there. I work all them. I work two websites. I work two pages on Facebook, clearviews.info and Clear Reform. And I work an open group, Clear Reform, on, on Facebook. So as you can tell, I'm actively involved in my own recovery. I'm actively involved in your recovery. If you want to chat with me, you can text me at 631-599-0218. If you want to call me, you can call me at 844-405-HELP. If you want to email me, you can email me at clearreform, that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M, at Yahoo. And if you want to go to my other website, it is www.clearreform.com, that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M.com. These are all methods that you can utilize, but if you are a person that uh, seems to constantly, when you're alone, find yourself drinking or doing drugs, check into a rehab center. They offer their 30, 60, 90 day programs. They take insurance, they take Medicaid. However, if you don't have either, contact your local website and see what's offered by your state. And if that's still a problem, contact me. Text me at 631-599-0218 or email me at clearreform.com at yahoo.com or call me at 844-405-HELP. 
I have connections. I'll see what I can do to try to get information on where you might be able to utilize some sort of uh, center, treatment center that doesn't require uh, uh, a lot of funds or any funds at all. But you need to reach out. You have those three methods of uh, fighting your addiction. All methods include uh, have to include an action plan by, by you. What is it that you expect from your recovery and how are you going to get there? And all methods have to include your higher power because fighting an addiction will not happen unless you have God on your side. Well, God's always on your side unless you admit to God you have a problem and you ask him for guidance and direction. You need to do that, folks. So in combination of any method we just spoke about and your higher power, you are on the road of recovery. Then you might want to utilize people like Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at Starting Point, 844-414-8444. You might want to utilize him as an addiction recovery coach. You might want to utilize me as an addiction recovery coach. There are so many people that are addicted to drugs and alcohol in this country that we can have thousands of addiction recovery coaches with plenty of business. And that's why I don't mind mentioning Dr. Luis Gonzalez because it is he that molded me to becoming a master addiction recovery coach. Without his educational program, I wouldn't be here. And you can also get that educational program if you go to his website, www.startingpointmn.com. So if you utilize any of those methods, you become a role model in your own home, you do these 12 things that you should be able to say about yourself. Number one, you need to start following your heart and your intuition. You need to start being proud of yourself. You need to start making a difference in not only your own life, but in someone else's life. You need to start being happy and grateful. You need to start uh, growing into the best version of yourself. There's always room for improvement. Each and every day I'm improving. If you would have seen my first video, it was a train wreck. And each time I do a video, a hundred and some videos later, they're becoming better and better. You need to start making every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, and every year count in your life because one day time is gone for you. God gave us a life on earth, but only a temporary life. It's not a permanent life. You need to be honest with yourself. If you see flaws, correct them. If you see other people with flaws, don't criticize them. You need to start being good to people that you care about. Say I love you to people. Show people that you care. Talk to people. Touch base with the senior citizens, your parents, your grandparents. They are lonely. Touch base with them. You need to know what unconditional love feels like. Sometimes the person laying right next to you could be miles apart from you. Start communicating. Start talking. Start saying I love you. You need to start forgiving for those who have hurt you. Remember I said, forgive, but you probably won't forget. You're only human. You need to take full accountability of your life. You are your captain of your vessel. You're the person that, that makes every decision. You are the person that writes your chapters in your book of life. But you can also include God in those chapters, and those chapters are guaranteed to be good if you include your higher power. You need to have no regrets. And this one I'm going to read again. This is one. This one is simple, a combination of all previous 11 things that I mentioned. Follow your heart. Be true to yourself. Do what makes you happy. Be with who makes you smile. Laugh as much as you breathe. Love as much as you live. Say what you need to say. Offer a helping hand. And when you're able, say I love you to uh, your loved ones appreciate appreciate all the things that you do have and continuously smile and with everything always have an action plan your action plan tonight when you go to bed instead of leaving your slippers your sneakers or your shoes at the edge of your bed push them under your bed folks why because when you wake up tomorrow morning you put your slippers or your sneakers or your shoes on you're gonna to have to go on your knees to go and get those from underneath your bed and why not while you're on your knees praise 
your higher power and thank him for another day where you're able to take another breath where you're able to open your eyes because somewhere in this world somebody is taking their last breath and closing their eyes as we speak right now thank your God that you're able to live another day also you need to start being generous with people if you have extra give and it doesn't have to be to a family member it doesn't have to be to a loved one it could be a simple thing to a neighbor or a homeless person because how you came on to, uh, into this earth was which was with nothing and when you leave it'll be with nothing so all your personal possessions are not going to be leaving with you. They will not be a U-Haul truck with your personal possessions behind the hearse that's carrying your body to your final resting place. Forget that analogy. You are leaving this earth with nothing. So why not give some of your possessions to someone in need? Because when you do for others, it will make you feel good and certainly will make God feel good about you. Share. I always say sharing is caring. So start sharing today. But no matter what you do, you need to include your higher power. And you always have to set a goal. And how do you set a goal with an action plan? An action plan gets to your goal and then you achieved whatever your goal was three steps that you need to go by so why not start today September 25th 2014 to be the first day for the rest of your life be the first day that you're writing this beautiful chapter in your book of life I just want to give a shout out to all my friends out in the audience um, especially to my friend up north I hope you're doing fine and my other friend in New Hampshire uh, I hope you're doing fine I hope everything is getting a little bit more stable in your house and home um, I just want to also say that no matter what, you can reach out to me any time of the day. You can reach me on my cell phone any time of the day. You can email me any time of the day. Cell phone 631-599-0218 and my email is, my personal email is ralph.friedrichs at yahoo. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. You can also go to my websites, clearviews.info. That's all information about addiction recovery. Tons of videos, folks, tons. You can go uh, see how I uh, do things as a coach to www.clearreform.com. Go to Facebook. Clearviews.info has a page. Please like it when you go there. Clear Reform has a page. Please like that. Join our group. It's an open group. Clear Reform. Folks, if you want to uh, talk to Dr. Luis Gonzalez about becoming a coach, 844-414-8444. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez, and you can find him on www.startingpointmn.com. That's startingpointmn.com, Dr. Luis Gonzalez. Also, if you need coaching done, you can go to the same contact information and speak to him in reference to that. Today was another good segment about 12 things you should be able to say about yourself. How many were you able to say out of these 12? Let's review them real quick and just write down what you can honestly say. I'm going to be honest what I can say, okay? Number one, I'm following my heart and intuition. I can honestly say yes, I do that every day. My heart tells me to do these videos and to help other people. I am proud of myself, number two. Check that off in the yes column for me. How about you? I do make a difference. These videos I know are helping some people, so I do make a difference. Check it off. Are you making a difference? I'm happy and I'm grateful. I really am. During my drunken years, I was uh, hardly ever happy and I never was grateful and I never had enough. Obviously, if I was drinking 10 to 15 shots of vodka, how happy and grateful could a person be that intoxicated? I am growing to be the best person that I can or the best version of me. Again, I can say yes. I make my time count. That is the one item so far that I have to put in my column that's no because I need better time management because I have so many things going on between my job and my, my mission of helping others that I need to come up with a 
better plan for myself. So that's now that was number six. So now I have five yeses and one no. I am honest with myself. Number seven. I do care about the people. Um, I, no, I am good about the people that I care about. How about you? I do know what unconditional love feels like. How about you? So now I'm up. To, that was number nine. I have eight in a yes and one in a no column. This is a tough one, and I have to say I'm going to check both columns. I have forgiven for those who have hurt me. Folks, that is so hard to do. We are human. I'm getting better at it. I have forgiven more, but for the folks that have hurt me, I'm going to check off both. So now that was number 10. I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have eight and two for this one. And I have to be honest with myself. I take full accountability for my life and I do that. So now I have nine and two. And last, I have no regrets and I certainly don't. Uh, you know, the only regret I have is that it took me this many years to, to, to do what I'm doing now because I should have done this years ago. So my end result is 10 that I can't say about myself and two that I need to work on. How many did you score? That is the question. Folks, this was a great segment. I hope we do this again real soon again. And with the grace of God, I will be doing this again. Uh, remember, um, I kept saying September 25th, but what I really should have said, September 26th because I forgot. Uh, we have Throwback Thursday on the 25th, my era. So it's actually September 26th you'll be seeing this video and I hope you enjoy this video. I haven't decided what I'll be doing for Throwback Thursday, but it will be a good one. And as I always say, thank you so much for coming by and uh, you have to let the sunshine into your heart and into your home and you will get nothing but positive uh, feedback, positive results. Get rid of the darkness, get rid of the negativity, drop to your knees and thank the Lord for another day he has given you and please start sharing with your neighbors, your friends and possibly even total strangers. Start sharing, start loving, start caring and things will change in your life when you stop denying you have a problem and you reach to your higher power. A sober today will guarantee you a better tomorrow and if you believe what I'm telling you in your head and in your heart, it will become clear in your living room, your kitchen, wherever you might be watching me. And as always, have a sober day and God bless you.